Hello and welcome to the Enhanced Decision Making Webinar Series. This webinar has been made possible in part through funding under the Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture's ADOPT program. Our webinar topics for today deal with other tools, phone apps, and programs that cow calf producers need to know. My name is Obio Haduruna. I am the Prince Albert Regional Livestock Specialist with the Ministry of Agriculture, and I will be chairing the webinar today. Our presenters for this webinar are Ray Williams with Gallagher, Kathy Larson with Western Beef Development Center, and Sandra Stanger with the Ministry of Agriculture. Ray Williams is the North American Business Development Manager for Weighing and EID at Gallagher. Ray has been with Gallagher since 2011, starting as a territory manager before moving to his current role in early 2014. He brings over 25 years of technical and agricultural marketing experience to the weighing and EID division. Ray is based out of the North America's corporate office in Riverside, Missouri, in United States. Our second presenter, Cady Larson, has been the research economist with Western Beef Development Center for the past five years. She's been working to provide tools and training on cost of production and interviewing young ranchers across Saskatchewan on their management and marketing practices, in addition to rolling out the Western Canadian cow calf survey. Originally from a purebred cattle and grain farm near Tyburn in southeastern Saskatchewan, she now resides with her husband and children at Prince Albert, where she works from a home office. Our uh, third presenter, Sandra Stanger, is the manager responsible for the livestock traceability rebate. Since coming to the ministry in 1993, she has worked in various areas. She has delivered a dozen different programs over the last few, way, few years, impacting the livestock crops and agribusiness sectors. She has been involved with the traceability rebate program since its inception in 2009. So before we begin the webinar, I have a few housekeeping notes. These presentations are scheduled to take about three quarter of an hour, leaving time for questions or comments. If you have any question during the presentation, you may type them in the question box in the bottom right hand side of the control panel, and we can answer them at the end of the presentations. The question box can also be used to communicate any difficulties you may have with sound or presenter speed. During the presentation, you will be muted, so there is no feedback that will interfere with the audio. Please ensure that the volume on your speakers is turned up. And if you're having difficulty with your speakers, there is also a telephone option, which requires you to dial in to listen through a phone while viewing the slides on your computer screen. And if you're viewing the webinar today from a computer with dial-up, you may experience some delay. If we run into a delay, with the webinar, please stay online and our host will reconnect. After you exit the webinar today, a brief evaluation will appear. Please take time to fill it out. It will really help us to plan future events. A link to the recorded webinar will also be sent out to registered participants and will be posted on our website following the live presentation. So at, at this time, we will start the presentation and I will hand things over to Ray Williams. Ray, please uh, take over. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me here. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, great. Well, my name again is Ray, and uh, I am so pleased to be here and talk about uh, livestock weighing and EID solutions for cow calf producers. Um, our operations uh, in North America are extensive and our product line is amazing. It's, uh, it's very timely. It has um, the cow calf producer and all other producers at mind with a very customizable solution to uh, tracking data and being compliant to CCIA and any other government programs that are available right now. We're going to talk about our uh, scale and data collectors today. Gallagher scale heads and data collectors range from our very uh, entry level all the way up to the most advanced data and weighing systems. These systems, again, are simple to use, but very powerful platforms to track all kinds of data. 
The first unit that I'd like to talk about is our TSI-2, which has now become one of the, the world's most comprehensive data collection devices available. But yet, with all that said, um, it's very simple to use, and I'm going to illustrate in a few moments how simple it is. But with that, it has, got, it has a comprehensive uh, drafting ability in it with the ability to accurately inventory all of your stock and your availability reporting at a fingertip, easily customizing all your weighing and EID uh, recording sessions and recording observations and future actions on your herd, and evaluate your breeding performance um, with all the capabilities of customizing AI um, records and such and, and merging them to your entire herd. We can easily transfer all of this information with our new TSI-2, which is now having uh, with now installed um, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, where we can transfer it to the web or to a cloud in, in the near future as well. We can send it to all kinds of different devices. This device also, with all the software on board, has a, a touch screen. So it's easy to see in the daylight as well as using it at shoot side it is very, very um, operable to, uh, to, the, to the producer. It's very tough as well. These are shockproof, waterproof devices, so they do not have issues with being out in the weather at any time. The new TSI-2 with, with a million way record uh, storage capacity just on the machine itself, but the software then can be transferred to your computer where a much more powerful APS professional uh, software is going to be available, is available right now. It also connects to any Bluetooth device, uh, whether it be the input device or a printer, perhaps, if you wanted to send information out and print it on the spot. We plug and play with all other weighing and EID equipment that, manufa that is manufactured by Gallagher and many other competitive products as well. Not only can you manage your herd information, but you can also manage activities around your uh, farm or ranch as well. And uh, I have uh, several customers that are using this device with lots of success in managing different aspects of their, of their operation as well. This particular device, the Livestock Manager TSI-2, comes with, as I mentioned, <coughs> the uh, professional software, which by itself is uh, uh, extremely powerful if you're using it with one of our readers. But as it comes with this unit, it sits in the background of your collection area. And there's additional training available uh, and packages available if uh, we have a producer that is interested in uh, the uh, inputting all of their basic data from their operation, whether it be written down on a piece of paper or in a ledger or in Excel, we can bring that information directly into our product and populate screens for the, the timing when you're out by the, the animals and working with them. The APS standard software, there are two versions as I mentioned, the standard and the professional. The APS software standard comes with all of our readers and then the, the actual APS professional just comes with the, uh, the TSI unit. In the professional version of our software package, we have several enhancements with records uh, that can be printed and different types of reports that can be generated that gives the, the farm or ranch uh, producer a uh, printed record or as, as he needs to sort down and draw, drill down to specific metrics that they're trying to uh, observe. And one of the other pieces that the, that the software allows us to do is a virtual terminal of the TSI screen that you can actually program at your desktop in your computer with the software and then upload right into the TSI at any given time. In this particular example here, this is a TSI that act, this is the TSI screen that actually is in the software, as I mentioned. And as simple as it sounds, we just simply create new sessions with full animal ID. And then I can pick any number of traits and add any trait that I want to measure with my herd. And this is, a, a, as I mentioned, a completely customizable platform that has endless opportunities. Um, there's other products on the market that 
tasks may have a limit to the number of, of traits that you can actually add to this system. But this particular platform, you can literally add any trait. So when I get ready to work with animals, I want to pick out different types of traits that I want to monitor this particular day, as an example. And I just simply slide them right over to the other side. And I get a, a, a reference here of what's going to happen that day. If I'm going to apply medications, I just simply choose the medications that I want to do that day. And by doing this, all animals are going to get the same record. If I decide that I want to um, uh, add a, a specific uh, drug to an animal, let's say it be, uh, it be uh, hurt or lame or otherwise, I can simply add an antibiotic just by adding uh, a new activity, which is a medication, at any given time for that specific animal. When I move on to the next animal, however, that information is, is removed, but the note is written down here of what I've done to that animal. As well, I can add a note to that specific animal anytime I want to as well. When the animal is seen, um, I simply click on all of those traits that I've, that I've picked out uh, before. If I want to change a particular value, I just simply change it um, in this particular field. And so on, I have a complete record of my animal. In this particular example, um, as well, this being a calf as an example, I can put the dams number in this particular area and start to create a progeny of, the, uh, of that particular animal set. So anytime I, I'm monitoring a calf's performance, I will always know who the dam or even the sire is in that particular situation. As this particular animal gets larger, and is often you know, uh, either kept or, or sold, uh, those records follow this information all the way through the end. Extremely powerful piece of equipment. But again, as you can see on the side here, very simple to use. As we move on through the process, these are different screenshots from the APS software. And again, here's another shot of a, a progeny record that I can completely populate with all kinds of offspring from year to year and give myself a complete overview of how that, uh, that dam's performance is gone, if I need to make a culling decision, or perhaps any kind of a traceability issue, I can get right back to the original records at any given moment. The next piece I'd like to talk about is our HR5 wand reader. Now this reader is unlike any reader on the market today. It has the ability to import traits, activities, and like data right onto the reader. And with the HR, with the, uh, the APS software, I can actually uh, import that information before I go out and work with animals. I'm going to show you a quick re uh, resource here on YouTube as an example, and this information can be found on our website as well. But this is the short video of the performance of the HR5. In the YouTube section that we are populating, we have quite a few different videos that show our equipment in process. This is the only reader available on the market today that you can actually change the visual number and link it to the EID number on the fly. So whether I'm hooked to a set of scales or not, or if I'm just inputting into um, my, my basic equipment, I can completely monitor all of my, uh, so sorry about that. I can monitor my entire herd just from my fingertip and work with the, the wand reader anytime I need to like that. Here are a few more screenshots of what we can do with the HR5 reader. You can enter the, uh, the visual and the EID numbers over, and it actually counts the animals as I go forward. Collect data. I can put my breed, the sex, and condition codes on the reader itself. 
can make calling decisions ahead of time if I'm trying to uh, uh, select a group of animals that needs to be called in a future day. I can actually import that, and as I as I reach that animal, or I got them in the in the squeeze chute, and it, it scans the EID number. The screen turns a different color, and the call information comes up and lets me know that it's definitely been uh, it's time for that animal to go a different direction. I can do prey, past traits, activities, any life data reported against that animal, and as I mentioned earlier, report visual tags. One of the most exciting features of this particular type of wand is that it's got a mothering menu where I can actually link the, the heifer or the dam to the calf without, uh, com without the, uh, the, the scan being done. I can actually find the, the visual tag, input it, and actually then uh, continue on with the, with the record. When I import this into the APS software, I can actually create a progeny on the software, and that can be uploaded to either the TSI, or you can uh, work with that information right on your computer. Our, our equipment, our readers, are compatible with all brands of weigh scales on the market today that have Bluetooth capability. So you can have a powerful reader like this and have a basic scale that takes uh, an EID Bluetooth and it will actually populate the system in the right position every time. The animal performance software is included with this particular wand as well it can be upgraded to the APS Pro version of our software at any time and gives you more reporting and, and, and more powerful uh, software capabilities as well. And we offer complete training on this product, as well as any of our other Viagra products, where we can go in and, and work with you on the, on the computer, or talk to you on the phone, or in person with one of our territory managers. We also sell uh, uh, another reader called the HR4. Now, this reader doesn't do as much as the HR5, but as a basic reader that you can do certain types of calling and drafting as well as uh, other records that can be imported into the, this one. It is the same size and ergonomic um, feature of the HR5 and HR3s. It gives you a very, very strong uh, one at a little lesser price with uh, the ability to send that information right over to the scale at any time. The nice thing about these particular type of wands as well is that you can go down the alleyway and actually scan animals as with a, with a continuous read. If you're monitoring withholding periods, you can actually see the withholding uh, information come up on your screen in the event that you need to sort off a cow that's still within withholding periods as well. Our workhorse, this is the HR3. It's a Bluetooth enabled uh, wand. It works great with any of our products to input the EID directly into the scale or to um, a, uh, an app uh, that uh, you might have with your phone. Um, any, it reads all the different types of tags on the market with a Bluetooth adapter. For those scales that do not have a uh, Bluetooth capability, we include this adapter so we can now communicate with just about any kind of scale out there on the market. This immediate tag feedback gives you um, uh, a super bright red uh, LED and it, uh, you need a snout and it vibrates so you know that you've made a positive contact with your tag. As mentioned earlier, it's compatible with all the different way seals on the market and comes with the APS standard software for real ease of, of upload. We also have the Gallagher uh, data transfer app, which is uh, an Android based app at this time. In, in a future day this year, we're going to be coming out with a uh, iPhone type version of this same app, which allows you to transfer all your data to your phone and then upload to CCIA or to any email and any format that you'd like to send it to. We also have panel readers that are very, very capable of an automatic read as you have them mounted to the side of your squeeze chute or your alleyway. This BR series unit 
operates with a rechargeable battery and a CCIA uh, approved. Um, the read range on this particular um, panel is just under two feet, and most um, of the alleyways it'll read across and catch that animal's tag. Now, if this is used for loading or unloading animals, it's wonderful because it takes account of all the animals and then allows you to transfer that information either Bluetooth to a waiting device, a computer, or your phone, or it can be picked up at a later time. As a counter, easy installation, you just simply want to mount it right to the side. As well, the controller itself is removable, and take, you can take it in and recharge the battery after it's been in use. Pairs with all other devices with Bluetooth, and of course, it comes with an easy data transfer software package with it as well. Gallagher teams are ready to help you wherever you're at. They're available on the phone, or through our reputable dealer network. We have Gallagher territory managers that are um, uh, available by phone or email. And our repair and support facilities in Canada are second to none to take care of our customers' needs wherever they might need uh, any kind of support with, uh, with the systems at all. And we'd like to help you get the right equipment the first time and getting the support you need and the training that you need to get the most out of your equipment. I'd like to mention Don Shepard is one of our territory managers and he is uh, in Saskatchewan a very capable man. He uh, works very hard to take care of his customers, answers questions, and is available to support you or the dealership in, uh, in the markets. And of course, as always, Gallagher CA is a very comprehensive website with lots of new resources we just came out with recently. It gives us the ability to really uh, service our customers with lots of uh, uh, web support from brochures to specifications on our equipment and any kind of help that you'd ever need. In addition to all that, all the products that I spoke about today are uh, qualified for the Saskatchewan Growing Forward 2 program, rebate program. And please uh, visit the website below to get more information about that as well. And I want to thank you so much for your attention. Um, it's been my pleasure to be with you today. Thank you very much, Ray. Um, please, if you have any question for Ray, you can enter it in the question box, and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. So right now, I will hand things over to, to Kathy to take us through the next presentation. Kathy, take it up. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? All right. So I'm going to uh, first start off with some live pollings. We're going to have OB put up a series of uh, survey questions, and you can start loading the first question. And you'll, you know, everybody that's uh, part of the webinar today can actually vote right from your desktop. So um, I'm just going to read out the first question for you once OB gets that loaded. And uh, the first question is, if you own a smartphone, which operating system does it have? So you have three options there. Do you have an iPhone? Do you have an Android type device? So uh, Samsung, LG, Motorola, or do you have a Blackberry phone? So you can just click right on the uh, one of the three answers, whichever best pertains to you. And Obi can see on his end who's, how many votes have come in. We can't see how you vote. But uh, we will show the poll results after we go through the seven questions. How do things look, Obi? Yeah, we have uh, approximately 69%. Okay, 73 now. Okay. All right, so just click on the one that you want, and we'll close this one right away here, and we'll go on to the next question. So the second question we'll have up here. says, have you installed apps on your phone or tablet, whatever you have? So have you installed any apps? Your options are yes, I have, no, or I don't know, what's an app? So click on the one that best fits your situation regarding your smartphone or tablet. Have you installed any apps? And we'll show the poll results after we go through these seven questions. So yes, no, or I don't know, what's an app? 
Okay, next question. And the third question is, have you installed any ag-related or agriculture-related apps on your phone or, or tablet? So uh, your options are yes, no, or I don't know, you lost me at installed. So click which one best uh, pertains to your situation. Have you installed any agriculture type apps on your smartphone or tablet? Yes, no, or I don't know. All right, we'll go to the next question. And the question is, question number four is, have you ever paid for an app or made an in-app purchase? And your options to select from are yes, no, or I don't know. So when it comes to apps for your smartphone or tablet, have you ever paid for one or made an in-app purchase? All right, you can close that one, Obi, and we'll proceed to question five. And question five is, do you own a Bluetooth RFID reader? So uh, Ray's just spoke about readers with uh, Bluetooth connectivity. So the one reader that can read the button tags and also has the ability to Bluetooth connect to a device. Do you have one? Yes. Or you don't have one? No. Or no, but I'd like one. Okay, let's go to the next question. Uh, the sixth question is, do you own a digital scale head? So when it comes to, if you have a weigh scale on your operation and the readout or the, the scale head, does it have a digital readout uh, for those of you who have scales on your yard? So yes, no, or no, but I'd like one. So you just click on the, the best answer that suits your situation and then we'll show you the results once you've gone through. We have one more question left. Okay, and the last question. Have you used the traceability rebate program? So it's the same program that uh, Ray mentioned on his last slide, the gro slide, the growing forward to. So is it uh, yes, you've used this traceability rebate program? No, but I'm aware of it or never heard of it. Those are your three options. Okay, and then we'll, uh, now that you've got, we've got a chance to go through the seven polling questions, let's see what the results were, Obi, if you can load up from the first question. So we have, the bulk of you have uh, iPhones. Okay, no one has a Blackberry, well guess what, I do, so that's why the option was up there. So we'll get to the next question. Uh, anyone that's installed apps. So 81% of you replied that you have. So that's good. So you uh, maybe know more than I do and what I'm about to share today. So let's go to the third question. Have you installed agriculture apps? Uh, kind of split there, 57 versus 43. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, we'll get to the next question. Have you ever paid for an app or made an in-app purchase? Um, split there as well, okay. And we'll get to the next question. Do you own a Bluetooth RFID reader? No. Uh, yes, and uh, so most of you do not have one, but there's some that want one, so that's interesting as well. Okay, and then the last question, or sorry, di digital scale head if you own one would be the question six. Split on that, a few of you sort of one third all the way through, and then we'll look at the last question's results on the traceability rebate program, awareness of that program. Thankfully, we all have Sandra after me talking about it. Uh, yes, a few of you have used it, no, but I'm aware of it, and then a few of you haven't heard of it. Right on, That's, that was uh, great, thanks, Obi. I'll continue with my presentation now. So, 
I'm just going to move this away and make my slides big. All right, so just to, to go through what's an app. So it sounds like most of you know what an app is. In fact, you download them to your own devices. So it's essentially software for your smartphone or tablet, your mobile device. And really, there's a lot of basic apps out there, ones for weather and games and social media, like Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. And, and a lot of those you'll actually even find pre-installed on your device, right? When you get your smartphone and your tablet, there's already apps showing on your on your device but then you can download other ones often for free or for a small fee at the various uh, stores for each of your devices so Apple has the App Store there's Google Play for Android devices and then Blackberry App World well many apps are free they have that in-app purchase to get extra features and so you just once you're in the app you can click an in-app purchase and it nicely charges your credit card or there's other ones where you have to have the subscription. So you could download Netflix for free, the app onto your tablet, for example. But unless you have the subscription set up uh, with a paid account, then you, you wouldn't be able to access any of the content. I think it's important to note that apps are operating system specific. So Ray had made mention about how they have an Android app and they're looking to get one ready for uh, Apple devices. Um, if a developer wants to have, so say for example iCab, it's an iPhone app. If the developer Jake Meyer wanted people with Samsung phones to be able to, to use that app, he'd have to develop an entirely new app with different programming language. And some apps I've come to discover are also country specific. So in doing some of the background research for this presentation, there was one app that I really liked called Stake or Stock Take Plus, but it's only available to people in Australia. Uh, there's no way for me to access it. Um, so if you look, lots of times apps, games, calculators, even simplified versions of websites, uh, and there's also data tracking opportunities with many apps. Uh, IMO, which means, in my opinion, apps can aid in uh, record keeping programs that are out there for cow calf producers, but they don't necessarily replace them. Um, when I did a, just a basic search of the word cattle in the Apple App Store and asked to just find business type apps, this is what I found. There's a, quite a long list of options that showed up and some will say in-app purchases, some will show a price and some that just say get means they're free. Uh, you can see the different range of prices showing $23, $17, $12, $170. So you see there's lots of variety there. Did the same search on Google Play and uh, not as many show up, but you can see um, I wasn't able to just look at business type ones. So there's some very weird apps that are showing up. All this to say, how do you even decide which app to download? What makes you pick which one you're going to install on your device? So there's some resources available. Found this website link that shows a number of apps that are available, and you can even put up your own suggestions of apps you think fellow producers might want to try. You can just read App Store reviews. So for iCab, there's uh, people that have downloaded the app and tried it out. They'll have reviews up there. You can see screenshots of the app, how it will look on your mobile device, plus a description of it. Uh, nicely on Google Play, it actually shows you how many people have downloaded an app. But ultimately, after doing all this, there's this desire to want to test drive apps as well, and that can get costly in terms of both your time and your money. So I've taken uh, the lead in trying to create some tutorial videos showing how to maneuver some through some apps. Now, some apps, they already have tutorial videos to show you how to, to navigate through. Um, I would welcome any suggestions of videos you'd like to see. Just type your suggestions in the chat box in the same place that Obi said to put any questions you have for us panelists. And uh, I've already done a video for iCav and the calving book. And I will show me entering data that relates to the Western Beef Cow Calf Herd. And I'll make these uh, links available later today through social media and our website. And I'm also going to start adding a new feature to our trade booth, uh, trade show booths when we're at uh, events. So the first one will be at Swift Korea at the Stock Growers Conference on June 8th and 9th. There's going to be a, a tablet on display for you to uh, play around with some of the apps, especially the paid ones uh, that you don't want to put the money out, then you can take a look.
So let's move into some uh, agriculture apps that I took a look at and have some feedback for you. So these are three paid apps. There's iCav, Calving Book, and iCattle Manager Pro. You can see the difference in prices. You can see that uh, both iCav and iCattle are only for Apple devices, and Calving Book is available for both uh, iPhones and Samsung. And I just have some screen captures for iCav. You can capture some pertinent herd information. This is a screen to enter your calf record. Uh, this is what the, the lists, once you've added a number of calves, it shows them all. And you could just click on, say, 1C, and it would show up with dam information and uh, the various uh, information that you added for that calf. The only way to get data out is to generate it in a PDF format. They're actually looking at doing an update where it will be able to come out in terms of a CSV, which is usable in a spreadsheet format or Excel. Um, that was supposed to happen in April. It hasn't happened yet, but stay tuned. Uh, the Calving Book app, it, uh, you can use it on multiple devices. If you just log in with the same email and username, you can have multiple calving books, which would be useful if you have, say, a purebred and a commercial herd. So this is a 2015 calving book. I've added a couple of records there. You can shut off the fields that you don't record, say you don't know the sire or you don't care about coat color. You can shut those features off. And what's really nice is that this... Uh, this app, although it looks really basic, it does have this export feature, so you get a nice little email with your uh, records that you've entered, and here's a opening up of that file that would come by email, so it has my cows and my calf IDs and the records that I'd entered through that app. On the iCattle Manager Pro, Unfortunately, I just feel this is a little cumbersome and not very intuitive. I think they're maybe almost trying to do too much. Uh, one thing is that it, it, it handles 16 different species of livestock. So you can see right here, I've selected cattle. You have everything from buffalo, camel, chicken, donkey, ducks. And so it's almost like they're trying to cater to too many different types of producers. Uh, I just I, I found it a little bit hard to navigate through. Some free apps that are available for you. So Canfax has information just on the futures markets and the price insurance program. It has a break-even calculator and the ability to store some of the calculations that you were testing out. A price projection feature. Uh, Canadian Cattlemen is just a, an app related to the magazine. It has news information and uh, market information and weather details. And then Farm and Hand, for any of you that are listening today that are mixed farmers, this is grain oriented. Uh, the units are in bushels, for example, so you can track uh, your grain farming information on this app. And it's available, it's web based, so you could go from your computer to your smartphone to your tablet to, to add information. So I welcome any comments if any of you have downloaded any of these apps. Uh, Two more to look at here, both uh, available on both iOS and Android devices, so GrassSnap and Cow Poop Analyzer. So there's actually a nice link down here to learn how to use GrassSnap if it's something that interests you. It's developed by the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and it allows you to just keep a photo log of your pasture. So you can take a landscape photo and then up to five plot photos and it records your GPS positions, your coordinates, your date, the direction you're facing by field. So years change over time and uh, just it's a nice diary of your pastures. Uh, the cow analyzer actually is, is about cow pies. You can take photos of cow pies and there's some stock photos right in there with some information. Uh, the look of what a pie as an indicator of crude protein and digestibility and so there's a, a few photos in there of different looking cow pies with some explanation as to what's going on. So kind of interesting and developed by Texas A&M. And I don't want to uh, forget about mentioning how uh, on, in our second webinar we had presenters representatives of both CattleMax and BioTrack presenting and both of those have mobile interfaces for for those programs. So CattleMax, that's the desktop view, but then they also have something that's more suitable for a mobile device. And then BioTrack as well, they just they can simplify their larger record keeping program into something that's viewable right from your smartphone. So those are options for some of you that, that might work as well. And I want to make you aware of uh, 
a record keeping swooping exercise that's underway and it's about to wrap up in a couple of days here. A few breed associations are uh, conducting a series of focus group sessions and webinars and uh, also a survey earlier this year to see what would be desirable features if a record keeping app were to get developed. So it's not to develop an app, but just to see if there's a business case to maybe go in that direction and what it should uh, entail. So I'll be interested to see where this leads to. I know the American Angus Association has an app for its members to help with record keeping. And lastly, I want to invite you all to come out to our field day on June 23rd. Uh, we start the day bright and early with some coffee in the morning, presentation start at 10, and then uh, we have to stay up at 5.30. So there's my contact information. I am going to pass things over now for our last speaker to present. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Kathy. Now I will hand things over to, um, to, to uh, Sandra. Great, thank you very much. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so take it take it over, Sandra. Now wonderful. I'm just gonna just get rid of this little block here so you don't see that. So I'm very pleased to see given the, the quick little survey that Kathy did that uh, virtually all of you are at least aware of the livestock tree stability rebate program, even if you haven't actually accessed it at this point. So this program's been around for quite a while. It actually started under Joint Forward One in uh, 2009, I believe it was. So it's been around for a number of years. We got it uh, put into Growing Forward Two as well. It's quite a, I'll call it a lucrative program. We actually have, um, just bear with me here, folks. Uh, we actually have funding for the purchase of readers, and that includes things like weight tracking uh, devices that have uh, traceability technology built into them. Uh, we also cover traceability software and any associated training you might need either with the readers or the software. So for funding-wise, it's 70% to a maximum of $50,000. If you did receive funding under the Growing Forward One program, we attribute that funding to the $50,000 as well. There's very, very few people that access the full amount, so I almost guarantee every single eligible program. So 70% to a maximum of $50,000. Now, don't worry if you've already purchased your reader as or your software. As long as you've purchased it February 1st of 2013, up until now, you can still apply to the program for rebate on those items. And the program's actually in place until February of 2018. So eligible applicants under this are essentially anybody that handles livestock. So whether you're a producer, an assembly yard, an auction mart, a vet clinic, a meat processor, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. as long as you're handling animals, you're eligible for rebate under the program. So for readers, we do cover both handheld or panel readers. Now we do have some instances where a reader is actually built into a squeeze chute, so it is an inherent part of the squeeze chute. We will now not pay for the squeeze chute portion, but we will pay for the reader portion. Most panel readers that are attached to a squeeze chute can be purchased independently. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at a handling system that has a, a reader built directly into the squeeze chute, we will only cover the reader portion of it. So as mentioned, it includes reading and tracking, tra tracking devices with RFID tra tracking capability or traceability capability. So that includes the weigh indicators, scale heads. Um, there is a full list of the readers that are eligible under the program. We consider all readers that are on the CCIA uh, list. And I put the little website address there, so it's www.canadaid.com, and it's under their Tags and Technologies button on that page. As well, there are a number of readers and software that are not listed on CCIAs that we
helpful to identify all of the additional items that we've deemed eligible, as well as it identifies a number of items that are not eligible for rebate. So for software, um, we do have a few instances where folks already have a reader and they're wanting to buy independent software from that. A lot of the readers already come with software, but some people are looking at uh, you know larger herd management software capacity. So we do allow separate software purchase. However, that software does have to be used in conjunction with a, with a reader because this is about implementation of traceability technologies. So the software does have to have some capability for tracing of those RFID numbers and tracking of those RFID numbers. Again, the list of eligible under the program is on our website under that livestock traceability equipment list. Uh, and if you do plan on submitting to the program a request for rebate on standalone software, you must provide proof of a reader. So we can check on our system if you've already purchased a reader through our re and gotten rebate on it through our program, we can check and verify that on our system. But if you have not received rebate through the program previously and are not, not asking for rebate on a reader, we need some documentation showing that you do have a reader. So training, uh, this can be on reader or software use. In most cases, the training is included uh, in the package that you're buying or that it's self-explanatory and you don't need, need training. But in the event that you do need training, we will pay for the fees and expenses of the third-party trainer to come in and provide training. We're not going to provide the funding for your, your employee salaries and things like that, but we will pay for the, the services of that third-party trainer. We will not pay for installation costs, however. So we won't pay for install of software, install of readers, et cetera, et cetera. So eligible items, as mentioned, we've got that list on the website of all the different uh, items that are eligible along with the items that are on the CCIA website. We will uh, do rebates on full out purchases and we will also consider uh, rebate on leases. However, if you are leasing something, whether it's software or readers, uh, most folks that we've got applying to the program right now are, are doing some lease stuff on software, those leases must be paid up front. So we can't rebate you on something that you haven't paid yet. And we will only consider rebate on a maximum of a three-year lease period. So for example, if you lease some software for a one-year period, you can apply to the program and get rebate on that if you have paid that up front. You can apply again for another year and again for another year after that, but we will only look at a maximum of three years. Or you can or you can choose to lease for the pay up front for the entire three-year lease period and we will rebate on that. Now we will look at, uh, as mentioned, invoices. If you purchased anything between February 1st of 2013 and February 1st of 2018, if you're not sure if something's eligible, so for example, if you don't have access to the website or you don't see what you are considering on that on the website, either on the CCIA list or on our list, give us a call at the 1-800 number. Identify what you're looking at purchasing. We do recommend that you that you call us first if your purchase is dependent on whether you get rebate or not. Uh, but give us a call first, identify who the manufacturer is and what model you are looking at, what item you're looking at, and we'll make an assessment on whether that item is eligible or not. And there's a lot of products out there. Uh, anything on our list is not a recommendation on our particular product. We have not done assessments on whether those products are good, bad, or otherwise. It is purely a list of eligible items. So we highly recommend that if you're looking at purchasing something that you do some research either on the web or talk to your neighbors, see what they have, what's working for them, and to determine what's best suitable for your own operation. So as mentioned, if you phone in and ask, uh, you know, what's, what's the most purchases that are coming through or what's the best item, we're not going to tell you because we can't make recommendations on products. So not eligible, this isn't a full list, but this is some of the key items that we often see in claims that aren't eligible. Anything that's not paid. If you are purchasing something, whether it's reader or software or whatever, it has to be paid before you can make claim to us. Uh, taxes are included, RFID tags aren't included, installation of readers or software. 
If you're looking at weigh devices, we only cover the weigh indicator if it has traceability technology or traceability capability. We do not cover the low bar piece. So again, if you're looking at a whole weigh, bar, uh, weigh system, we will not consider the low bars. Uh, any computers, so whether it's smartphones, uh, laptops, that type of thing, they're not considered. And again, there is a more complete list on that livestock traceability equipment list of more ineligible items. So application-wise, this is a rebate program. So you go out and purchase what you want, and then you apply for the rebate. Again, if you're not certain about eligibility, give us a call prior to purchasing just to confirm that that particular item is eligible. And as mentioned as well, items must be paid for in full prior to applying, and that includes any leases that you might be considering. There are applications available right online, or you can call our toll-free number or stop by any of the ministry regional offices or give them a call and they can get you an application as well. Now in an application, uh, when you're sending it in, there's a number of things you need to include with it. Make sure you complete all parts of the form. We get a lot of forms that are incomplete, either missing names even, uh, signatures, etc., etc. Just make sure that you complete all parts of the form. Make sure that you include a photocopy of the invoice. Don't send us original invoices because those won't be returned to you. Send us a photocopy of the invoice. Make sure that it's clear. Also with that invoice, include proof of payment if the invoice does not show zero balance only. So in the line item at the bottom, if it does not say zero, you need to provide proof of payment. Simply having pays marked on the invoice in some manner will not suffice. So you'll need to send us a copy of your cancel check, a credit card receipt, or some other form of documentation that shows that that invoice has been paid. And those applications can be submitted either hard copy in the mail or they can be sent to us over the fax. If your application comes in complete and correct, we'll have payment processed for you within two weeks. However, if you do not have everything included with your application or we have some questions about it, your, your payment will be delayed. And again, deadline on the program is February 1st of 2018. Now, I have heard rumors on occasion that we're running out of funding for this program. That is, that is uh, purely rumor. I have not uh, had any indication whatsoever that we are running out of funding. However, we do recommend that if you're thinking of doing something, do it, do it sooner rather than later because you never know. We could run out of funds at some point in time. But there is no panic at this point. But please also don't wait till the end of the program. Uh, what happened at the end of GF1 is we had almost all of our applications come in at the very end of the program, which causes significant delays in your in your payment getting processed. And so please get your get your applications in early, and I highly recommend it because it is 70 percent, uh, 70 cents on the dollar for your items. So it is fairly lucrative. So as mentioned, there's uh, more information or applications available on our website. So if you go onto our website and you go on either under Programs and Services or under GF2, you'll find the Livestock Traceability Rebate. We also have a toll-free line that uh, has some gals on the phone that can help you with any questions that you have or if you have questions about eligibility of items, they can find out for you whether those items are eligible as well. Or you can go to any of the ministry regional offices. I also quickly wanted to mention that there is additional funding um, available for on-farm food safety and biosecurity through the Verified Bee Production Program, so the BBP program. Most of you have probably also heard about this uh, program as well. This is not offered directly by the ministry. It is actually the Verified Bee Working Group that handles delivery of this program and funding. And I've got uh, Koi Schellenberg, who is the um, I guess the director and coordinator of that program is the person that you need to contact. So I've got his contact information on there. You can also go on the website and punch in a Google search for Saskatchewan Verified Beef and all their contact information will come up there as well. Now for producer funding, for on-farm food safety, in order to get on-farm food safety or biosecurity funding, you do have to take training either through a workshop or online to be eligible for that funding. But there is funding for specified office equipment, and that includes the waste scales, including the load bars. 
connect extenders or software, and that's 50% up to 750. However, if you have received funding under the traceability program for the same items, you cannot apply to on-farm food safety and vice versa. So if you've got funding through the office program for items you want to apply through traceability, you can't do that either. So make sure you can choose which program you're going through for your funding. Uh, through the on-farm food safety program, there is also funding for first certification audits, and that's to come out and get your certification, and that will provide 50% up to $1,000 for the expenses of the certifier. Under biosecurity component, this is a new component just this year, there is funding up to $1,000 for a veterinarian to come out and do a biosecurity assessment on your farm and help you develop some uh, protocols to deal with these issues. So again, a little bit of additional funding. Quite often we get questions through the traceability program on these, but uh, I think I need to, to mention these other couple of areas of funding that you can get. So again, contact COI for those particular items. And is there any questions? Oh, thank you very much, Sandra. Uh, I would like to thank, uh, thank uh, Kathy and Ray as well. So at this time, we want to take questions. So if you have any questions, please enter them in the question box and we will try to answer them. So I have one question here for, for Ray. Um, is there a cold, is there a limit in terms of uh, temperature, cold temperature limit for this, the, the ones? That, uh Repeat that one more time. Because it was a what kind of a temperature? Is there a cold limit, like uh, some some limit that it wouldn't work in the ones? Yeah, and in fact, the one will support uh, tens of thousands of, of records before it needs to be offloaded into the software. So it, it has a tremendous amount of capacity already on board. So it's well over twelve to fourteen thousand. Entries that you can put on it before it has to be uh, offloaded into your software program. Okay, but uh, would it work in minus fifty? I think it was more on on the side of temperature. Yeah, would it work? Would it work in minus fifty uh, degrees centigrade? Oh, oh, yeah. In fact, uh, we have been testing. We've had it on the market for several years in Canada, and um, what we've been finding in other markets as well is it does work quite well at the lower temperatures. Um, we, you know. If, it, if it's so cold out that uh, the operator is, is having significant trouble being outside, uh, it doesn't uh, operate as fast. But in cold temperatures, we have not experienced any issues with the, the, the system performance. It's, uh, it's very durable and has uh, it's been tested at very, very low temperatures. Okay. Yeah, someone asked um, when you will be having a training around Lloydminster or Paradise Hill. Um, let's uh, let's look into that. Um, we can uh, we can get with one of our territory managers and uh, or facilitate a training uh, in the very near future. We'd love to do that. Okay. And uh, someone asked if you if there's a contact for Don Shepard. Yes, Don Shepard's uh, uh, contact information. Um, I can bring it back up here, or we can just recite it. It is Don D O N dot shepherd s h e p e r t at gallagher g a l l a g h e r dot com okay. thank you i think this question will be for sandra someone is asking why um, the saskatchewan program is not designed uh, to look like that of alberta where there is larger amounts uh, available for squeeze, shoot, and, and scales. It is, uh, every province has a different program, and it's very, very difficult to make comparisons between the programs because you'll find if you start looking into the details of the programs, whether it's Manitoba, Alberta, Ontario, Quebec, or wherever, you'll find that the funding levels differ, but also the eligibility uh, differs. So in in our case, Alberta has some programs that some items that are eligible under the on-farm food safety program, but our funding level
that is be very cautious on making comparisons unless you're looking at all the details of all the different programs because they do differ significantly both for who is eligible to apply, what items are eligible, the funding levels, and also in some cases, uh, like if, for example, in our program, we have a cutoff applications for our program. In other provinces, and I know this is the case of Alberta, sometimes they cut their programs off. For example, last year there were a number of programs they weren't accepting applications on. So like I say, just be a bit, a bit cautious, but it is up to the uh, provinces to decide what they're funding and for how much. Thank you. Uh, someone made a comment here that those from other provinces should look into the eligibility parameters as it may not be the same uh, as Saskatchewan. So it's something worth knowing as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, Ray, this might be for you. Uh, someone is asking, any estimate how much is going to cost uh, producers for for the hardware or, or software? Um, the depending on their needs and, and what they're specifically looking for, if they're just looking for readers, um, you know the the HR five in Canada is uh, well over two thousand dollars retail, um, and and again with the with the trace with the uh, the rebate program, of course, it makes that a very affordable piece of equipment. Um, so it depends on the on the needs of the customer, and and some folks have their scale already, so they may not need the uh, the higher end scale. But if they're looking to go full out and with the TSI and um, the the reader as a combination product, and you know uh, all the different components that might go with that, um, some of those systems will get into the the range. Uh, and I don't want to be quoted on this because it's I don't have it in front of me, but Anywhere from seven to eight thousand dollars, depending on what they buy, um, and again, that's the highest end, and it can be neck down to uh, uh, whatever the, the, the producer is requiring for their operation. Thank you, uh, Kathy. Someone is asking if there's any record keeping software for the, for for those with mixed farms. Oh, um, well, I think that Cattle Max would be an option for people because you can do either the full-blown purebred version or the pared-down uh, versions that just track some of the commercial details. So they have a, a number of different options, whereas BioTrack is pretty high-level purebred look at things. Um, other than that, there is some other, I know Chaps, for example, out of the States is looking to relaunch with the updated version in 2016. Okay. But is there one for someone with a cow, a cow herd and, and grains as well? Oh, for both that way? No, not that I'm aware of, but maybe there's people listening right now that are aware of an, an option. Usually, no, it seems to be one or the other. It's my experience so far. Hmm. So seeing no other question, um, we would like to thank you for joining us for this webinar. Uh, other tools, phone apps, and programs that cow-calf producers need to know in our enhanced decision-making webinar series. And uh, special thanks to Ray Williams, Kathy Larson, and uh, Sandra Stanger for putting these presentations together. We also thank the Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture and the Western Beef Development Center for their support. But if you have any questions regarding these topics or anything else related to agriculture, please contact your nearest Saskatchewan Regional Office, or you can call the Agriculture Knowledge Center at 1-866-457-2377, or you can visit our website. Please take time to fill out the brief evaluation that appears, that appears and uh, it really helps us to plan uh, future events. Thanks again for joining us and have a great day.